um, going to open this meeting here, 615, uh, which has been properly posted in three places, right, and on the website, and emailed to interested parties, right? Good. Um, does anyone have any additions to the agenda? We have a pretty good agenda already, but Frank? Yeah, I have an agenda item that relates to um, a Board of Listers and Board of Civil Authority. It won't take long. Okay. You have one too? Yeah, just, yes, just as Marianne, just an announcement. Just an announcement. An announcement? Yeah. And we yeah, were thinking yeah. we were thinking of putting Joan first. Okay. And Mike. Yeah, Brook Street. All right. <laughs> Always. Surprise, surprise. All right, well, let's start with the um, uh, minutes from the last meeting. And I'd move to accept those as they're typed up. I second it. Well, you weren't here, so I don't know no, if I you can second, second it. it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I second, second it. You I can, can. I can second it because I read it. Oh, you read it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right, all in favor? But you were. Yeah. All right. I read, I read it. I've been on the yeah. 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 That's too bad. And we've got. Um, so, talking about um, having Joan give your updates first, and it might clear up some of the other questions that would come behind it. Maybe, or it might create more. All right. We'll give it a try. Yeah. A little cloudy. Thank you. Well, we'll see. Um, a lot of it is just following up from last week. Um, some updates on the extent I know them. Uh, one thing we need to discuss is um, what we haven't formally addressed it is um, signage for um, traffic coming either a lot of mostly coming from the Bethel Mountain side because people come up you know from Bethel and they're able to go up Campbrook Road and then they get up to the T intersection um, and they don't know what to do mm -hmm. um, and also I met with Chris Bump for several hours on Friday to work up um, a new package uh, bid package for the upper Bethel Mountain Road projects and apropos of that, um, we got to talking about, you know, the issues with traffic, some of it being problems with overuse of Brook Street, others where people come up Bethel Mountain Road from Bethel and then don't know what to do and get lost or something. Um, and then just thinking about, you know, the coming, I guess it's here now, summer season and things like, um, the, uh, the music fest and the, the concerts and the, all the stuff that goes on here in the summertime, it would, you know, there are some people who may come here regularly in the summer and think they know their way around, but all of a sudden find that they don't know their way around mm -hmm. because of the road closure. So I asked Chris, at first he thought, well, why don't I uh, have Two Boys and Kings do a, um, a traffic redirection uh, plan for you? And then he pulled back from that and said, wait a second, I did send you something back in April, which he did, which was this multi-page, um, plan that was put together by someone at VTRAN who specializes in that kind of thing when there's road closures, telling us what we should do. And to tell you the truth, I took a look at it and kind of rolled my eyes and said, I, you know, this is way too complicated. It's expensive. It's very time consuming, labor intensive. The town just can't do it. Um, but the result was we have nothing, and he's, when I asked him about that on Friday, he said, well, we need to follow that, or at least follow it as best you can. Um, so I looked at it again quickly today, and there are um, some things we, I feel we can be doing. One of the things that Chris made clear is that we should definitely lease the large electronic boards. He said there will be the lease cost will be covered. So that's going to be covered under some covered of this project expense, right? Grant. Yeah, so Which we, we didn't think at first, it. so that's good. And yeah. we should have two on the Bessel side and two on, on the Rochester side, and they should be on state roads. And when we ask permission to do that, but he said he'll, he will make sure that happens. Mm -hmm. And he made some suggestions for where those signages should go. 
And so we can also get more advice from B-Trans if we need about how to set up the boards and keep them maintained and yada yada for the period of time we need to. So that's one thing. And then the second thing is June and I talked about a little bit, um, and I really think we should seriously consider um, making a, a pile of signs or a bunch of signs at va for various places where we want to direct traffic from, say, the T intersection. Um, up on the mountain, and you know we've all been told we cannot use the word detour, so we don't have to. We can just tell people, you know, for accessing Route 100 North or South, uh, follow these directions, and then we can have signs along the way that say six miles, you know, follow Middle Hollow Road or whatever it is, whatever route you choose to take, follow Middle Hollow Road six miles or whatever it is. At mile six, turn right for half a mile. And then at mile six and a half, turn left onto Quarry Hill Road and proceed downhill to whatever it is. We should decide what it is and then make very clear signage so that people can follow it without panicking, getting lost, et cetera. And also to redirect traffic to the extent we can away from Brook Street. And if we want to, we can even have a sign at the top of Brook Street that says, please do not use Brook Street, or however we want to say it. And this is since these are all local roads, it's, you know, the town has some jurisdiction over what we're allowed to say. So I think we, we should talk about that and, and actually put a trigger on it sometimes. And that's my suggestion. And if you want to mm -hmm. get together at some point and figure out, you know, which route you want to recommend people take. Um, and then we can figure out where the signs come from. Then we can have meetings, people talking about all the traffic on Quarry Road. Right, we can have Marsh rotations, Road, yeah, like rotate. everybody takes a week. One week, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I no, mean, thank you. Yeah, we, we have to do, yeah. We're make no, some make it easy. happier than they are now, <clears throat> and other people less happy. Yeah. But it's, yeah. it's a problem we have to try and solve as best we can. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. it's just going to be what yeah. it is for a Mike, while. Mike, right. you were wanting to talk about this. Yeah. I think what you need to take into consideration is a safety factor. You know, Brook Street isn't safe. Yeah. No, no Hill would be safer than Brook Street to fill houses. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, right. That's all it is. Yeah. yeah, and I've driven the last couple of days. I've come into work from where I live. Um, I've gone up that way and just kind of figured out that I didn't know my way around here at all, and I don't know <laughs> Rochester, so there are some things I still don't know. Mm -hmm. What would be confusing me? You know, where where would yeah. I not be sure where to go or where not to go? So it just might be worth sort of driving it and looking at it from that point of view and then deciding. Do you want to keep people on Middle Hollow because it's paved most of the way? Do you want to direct them onto North Hollow? It's, you know, the gravel's kind of loose there in places and you have to drive slowly. Um, but in some ways it's a little more direct if you want to get people right onto Quarry Hill Road um, rather than taking them down uh, Marsh Brook, which is okay, but it's a little, you know, it's basically a one, one width one car with road and if you have to pass somebody, you know, some of you are used to it, it's fine, but for mm -hmm. people who aren't, well, you don't want to meet the UPS truck on Marshbrook Road either, so, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's right. true so one for the other, so right. it's definitely got to be Cor Corey Hill Road, mm -hmm. I would say. So if, if we need a little committee, subcommittee mm -hmm. or something, meet once, make some decisions, and then uh, between Julie and, and myself, we can order the signs and, um, have them installed. Probably, as they're saying, to Route 100. Because I don't know if we've got to micromanage about how many miles it's right. going to be, but if we can just, just have something, sure. some, right. yeah. The only thing is, it occurred to me that, you know, as I was going, I went North Hollow this morning, you know, you just keep going and going and going it and going. Does. And you're it does. Really quite sure right. yeah. When you're going to reach, you know, the next turn. So it, it yeah. might be helpful, but. Yeah. Martha, you had a question? I was just going to suggest, you know, you said all these things that happen in the summer here. I know, for example, there are road races that come through and stuff like that. And if we have the dates for all of those. <laughs> I didn't think of that one. <laughs> yeah, is it, well, is it 100 on 100 race? Yeah. That's in August. Yeah. In August. Yeah. And, um, well, that's 100. You know, but that's 100. Like that. Yeah, but they're on, they're on 100. They're not going up yeah, over the road. Yeah. Yeah. But people who want to participate in it might have, I don't know. They'll have to find out. Yeah. You're right. There are a lot of people I know from the Randolph area where I work that come over for concerts on the park and things like that. And so having signage to help them would be. Yep. So, and, and, nope. and they come for the chamber music concert. 
So if you just want to let me know how you want to do it. Yep. The main reason I was meeting with Chris Blount was um, because, well, first of all, um, last the last meeting, um, the latest information we had about the estimated cost of the project was somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.6 million, 1.6. According to Chris, now it's looking more like 2 million. Oh. That is partly because we're including a fair amount of work on Upper Bethel Mountain Road, and then you add in the uh, the cost of the engineering contract, which for Du Bois and King is somewhere in the neighborhood of 160,000 now, and you know that you know that yeah. go up a little bit as more things are discovered. You know they have to do more technical work, etc. So for two million dollars, you know we have to be crossing ever every yep. I and dotting every T, every T when it comes to uh, federal highway funding because. They're sure to audit us just because it's such a huge amount yeah. of money. And that means that we have to have all of our paperwork in mind. So the nice sort of compact um, bid package that I was working on with Cricket and Cooter for the upper upper stuff um, is not going to cut it at all. So uh, he's helped me put together a package, which is mm -hmm. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. It just has That's to be That's what that it way. is. Yeah. Um, it's complicated, and one of the things that um, I'm going to be talking about with Chris some more, and this was a, a suggestion by Cooter, which seems to make a lot of sense, is when you drive down upper, you know, the upper part of Bethel Mountain Road, there are sort of discrete sites along the way where you can see that you know, there's going to be shoulder work and ditching and some cross culverts and stuff like that. But really, if you go all the way down to the T intersection, you realize that whole area needs <coughs> proper ditching. Because what's the point of doing a little ditching project here, and then it's kind of the way it was, and then a little, you know, another little section here, and then you have sort of the old ditch. You really need something that's a continuously flowing, you yeah. know, connected system. So he would really like to combine what we're presently calling sites two, three, and four, which are starting from the, uh, the Doherty's garage, would be one site up to the T intersection. That would still be site two. But then from the T intersection all the way to the town line would be site three. And sort of eliminating what we've been calling site four, which is right now uh, near Terry Severy's house. Yeah. So Chris is supposed to be coming on Wednesday to take a look at that whole section and let us know whether you know we can just conclude that whole thing. And then with that information decided, I can finish up the big package. But that does mean that that work is going to get delayed by several weeks because I won't be able to get it into the paper. For we have to re, re advertise the bids, kind of start from scratch, even though you know we can deal with the same contractors hopefully that came to the original bid meeting, pre bid meeting. Uh, but start again, you know, with, we won't get it into this week's paper. We'll have to see next week's paper. So. Um, Cooter said he couldn't be here tonight, so I don't know if we're going to be able to get this all, all the ducks lined up so that we're actually, you know, so that the contractors are ready to start the time so that we can complete it by August 9th, which is the date that Cooter would really like to have it done so that we have enough time to get the paving, the paving done. Yeah. Just so you know, that's it's probably going to get pushed back at least a couple of weeks. Who, who is the agency? The EC that you're dealing with? Or? No, it's it's B -trans. Federal Highway. Vtrans. Oh, Vtrans. And Vtrans through Vtrans and also through what's called uh, well, it's District Four is who we've been working with the most now. District Four has handed over the main part of the coordination to another Vtrans agency called Municipal Assistance Bureau. I think I talked about the last meeting. And they are our primary contact. But Chris Bonk is still very much involved and extremely helpful. But DEC is not involved. DEC is not involved. I mean, the work that will be done will be in conformance with yeah. the general road permit yeah. to the extent that there is hydrologically connected sections. But apart from that, DEC is not a part of this. Because this is the trans universe. Martha, you had a question? Yeah, I'm sorry. I somehow missed um, <coughs> when the date the bids are due. 
We don't have it. You don't have one yet. No. But John wants the work done, wants to hope, hopes to have the work completed by August 9th. Yeah, so. but I don't know if that's going to be possible. So there will be time to get the paving done. Uh, right, but I don't know if that's going to be possible. Just given because we have not actually gotten out the folded bids and the big packages. Okay. We have to kind of start that process again, so we're like two weeks behind. So but this is also separate from the application made to FEMA? Yeah, this, this, this is, is not totally a, different. This, none yeah. of this is FEMA I'm talking about now. It's all federal highway. Yeah. Yeah. FEMA are all the other sites in town, yeah. which there are about 22. Mm -hmm. Um, is, there, is there any money in this to prepare Brook Street after this project's done? Uh, it's a good question. Um, in our last big meeting with VTrans, we asked about that, and they really don't have an answer for us right now. Yeah. It could be one suggestion Chris Bump had, which is possible, is that we could apply for a regular round of VTrans grants that come out every year called Structures oh, Grants. Um, and right there's now. also class two roadway grants. Brook Street is a class three. 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 So yeah. we wouldn't qualify for that. Anyway, we can appeal to VTrans. There's also Better Back Roads grants as well. So there, there's probably other funding for that. Um, but he couldn't, he couldn't specify any more. Does remind me who Chris Bump is? He is the district four, I forget his exact title, but he's like the, the chief technical person for district four VTrans. Right. Brook Street's getting pounded pretty bad right now. Yeah. Yeah. It makes All it harder traffic. and better. Yeah, and they, they've heard it loud and clear. Yeah. They know about it. Um, they sympathize, but their basic attitude right now is we've got to focus on fixing Bethel Mountain Road, and then we will get to the issues with Brook Street, at least in terms of repairs. But also, Route 100 has come up, and Maple Hill has come up, or I don't know. Route 100 has come up. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Martha? Well, that was another question because <coughs> I, like many people, are dri I'm driving around now because I go end up every day. And the section of Route 100 in Rochester, below town in particular, is really, really, really bad. And I know it's not your fault, but do you have any idea? I remember at one time you said that some of you talked to the people to say that we might be on your paving list. That, that was a long time ago. That was ago. a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. By the Lord, it's a long time ago. I just was wondering when yeah. I was going to be home today. I thought I'd ask. Yeah. Well, I did, I, I guess that's okay to pass along when I was meeting with Chris. Um, he said something about, uh, I guess, I'm not sure exactly where it stands, but they're really looking at Route 100. I wouldn't expect any, anything anytime soon. Um, but I guess it's kind of like it keeps coming up. And so his answer just a few months ago was, forget it, it's off the table. We were going to do it at one time, but, you know, priorities were elsewhere in the right. state. Right, you're building a bridge over on Route 12. Yeah, there's lots of stuff going on all the time 73. all over the state. But yeah. he did say something about, you know, I guess the discussion is starting again about this section. Yeah. Maybe but there's some hope. Sorry. But it came to mind because Dean Mandel raised it at the Planning Commission meeting. So it's obviously on his mind. Sure. Just as I guess it's on mine. Well, yeah, and the yeah, folks who serve on the, Andy serves on the Transportation Committee of mm -hmm. Two Rivers, right? Mm -hmm. And every year they come up with a list of priorities. Yeah. Yeah. And Route 100, I know, is always on yeah. there, but it doesn't get prior. No, it keeps getting bumped by things like Bethel Mountain Road and, and <laughs> other, yeah. <laughs> the bridge. And they can solve yeah. some of those problems. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's true, something. yeah. It would be nice to Makes it go slower. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they've got a ton of culverts to replace and all kinds of stuff and don't know what Yeah. So. No answer for that. No. Right, Mike? right. No um, good answer. It was my understanding that this Bethel Mountain project had to be done by October 15th, right? If we want to get 100% reimbursed. Right. Right. So is this delay going to run it over that? Or? No. No. No way. <laughs> no way. We're hoping not. It's going to be a little safe. Yeah. No, th this this what she's talking about are the culvert, the three culvert replacement or two culvert replacement. So she was talking yeah. about the contract, not didn't. Oh, that the upper Bethel Mountain Road yeah, blocks. Yeah, they are part of that, but yeah, separate. Those, those should there's, there shouldn't be any problem. Right, with so everything done. you're looking at is 15th of October. Still. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 No, I, I don't know if item three is related to the EWP. Application that you mentioned. 
it, it was an application for funds for. Um, you mean uh, another DEC grant and aid? So that's something. No, you mentioned DWP. I think it was right. a, something yeah. that we could have applied for. But well, the only thing that is happening right now, and the town has done it, is to send a letter. The agency that handles EWP is the Natural Resource Conservation Service, which is part of the Ag Department. Um, and we sent in a letter, you know, sort of reserve a spot for the town saying that we would possibly be interested in participating in that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's June 15th is when was the deadline for that, and that was done a week and a half ago. So if there's still an issue because with that program, yeah. it provides 80% funding to the landowner, and the town agrees to kick in 20%. Now that's going to be a stretch for Rochester. Um, so we, I guess we would cross that bridge if we come to it. But are there applications that um, property owners should be filling out? Not at this point. Okay. That's all the information we have is that they will let us know if we're in the program and how it's going to work. So I guess you have to just stay tuned on that one. Yep. And? And I think that's all I have. So in terms of the um, the grant and aid for other oh. hydrologically oh. connected road sections, are we pretty much keeping busy with these projects and not thinking of that? Or I talked to Cooter today about it, and he actually had a good idea because, as you know, last this past weekend there was a major slide on Bingo Road, mm -hmm. um, and that's certainly hydrologically connected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he thought that would be a good. Yep. Granted aid. He also wants to do a fair amount of ditching, um, which would also qualify for granted aid, but that's probably going to exceed the amount of money that we would have available from that program because that's been running somewhere in the neighborhood of like, you know, seventeen, eighteen thousand right. dollars So um, I told him, you know, he realizes that he wouldn't be able to do all of it at once. Um, but the, the most urgent thing is is fixing that slide. Mm -hmm. It's you know showed me pictures I haven't yeah. seen in person. It's pretty pretty <coughs> severe. He is um, meeting on Wednesday morning with Jaron Borg, the stream engineer, to take a look at it and get Jaron's take on what can and can't be done there and how to do it. And he's invited Cricket to be there as well. Um, since that point, you know, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I thought, I don't know if this is a possibility, but depending on how that goes, we do now have a, once again, a road maintenance agreement with the Forest Service on Bingo. Now, I understand it's not necessarily what they had in mind, right? but <coughs> maybe, you know, once we find out what the scope of this thing is and what the cost is, maybe we can appeal to them and see if they can come up with some cash to help with work on Bingo. Because they use it, to, even if it's not. A is this, of this, is this on the section of road that would be involved in the Robinson project at all? Mm, I don't know about that. I Maybe don't they're, know. they're bringing logging. They're not bringing logging. Yeah, they're going to be yeah. logging up there. Yeah. yeah. So well, so that's another reason then, because that would certainly have an effect on logging trucks using that road. So that would be something we're talking about once we have more information. John, I'm sorry, I'm acronym challenged here. Uh, what does BMP implementation mean? BMP is best management practices, best and that's that is BMPs are what the um, general the municipal road general road permit yeah. Um, yeah. puts forth. This this is how you should be doing things. Yeah. All right, um, and then in terms of the um, the equipment for the um, oh, you're yeah. talking about a. Um, Gave me a wish list. Yeah, the cedar. Oh. Hydro cedar. The Hydro cedar is down on the list now. Yeah. Is it? The leaf blower. Ah, yeah, leaf blower. Yeah. It's, which is not just your garden variety yeah. leaf blower. It's to keep the ditches clean once they've been stoned. And also to clean the roads before they grade them so they don't right. hold oh, okay. leaves. So that's just number one into, yeah. wish list. That formal announcement hasn't come out yet. Okay. So I will get something I'm sure. But we've spent the money. <laughs> Um, as soon as I get it in my inbox, I'll let you know <laughs> and get it in there. Well, that's mouthful. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just to 
keep moving through in order here. We have a couple applications for use of the park and um, Pierce Hall Community Center on June 30th wants to have their annual ice cream social with ice cream for all antique cars, games for kids. And um, I would move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ice, ice cream. cream and yeah, cars. Yeah, going to bring it. Yep. And we also have another application from the White River Valley Players for the annual harvest there on September 7th. And that's, um, we all know what the harvest fair is, I'm pretty sure. And it's, um, I'd move to approve again. Second All down. in favor? All right. Nine. Say what? I said it's our 31st. 31st, yeah. Thank you. All right, get some of that busy work out of the way. And. So then, uh, I guess these next items on the um, agenda amendments fall under the guest Frank Russell. You would talk about <laughs> two Maple Hill Road culverts who um, outflow onto your property. Yep. This is my letter that pertains to that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want all this mouth about here. I'm not going to be able to include much of it. Just, no, just, just for your information. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good courtesy. Right. First, obviously, I'm thirsting for information about the roads and culverts here. And I want to thank particularly Patty Harvey for sending me this 23-page document, which has all you want to know about rills and in slope, um, whatever. Okay. And then she sent me a nice memo to the reported um, that, uh, that that included a, a selection from a recent site for, site visit report from a Vermont district engineer relating to Maple Hill on a section of it. And then there was this interesting handout on the kitchen. <coughs> yeah. so you have all that stuff in here. Yeah. Whatever. And I offered to pay Patty for this, but she said, oh, no, no. I wanted you to know that I was trying to not build a town here. And Dune said I could show this if I only had, only if I had new photos, but I do. That's it. This is the 2008 storm. This is Irene. Uh, I'm sorry, you've seen these three, but not this one. Not these two. And that's what my property looks like right now. Yeah. Might as well show them to the camera since they yeah. have a wider audience. Yeah. 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 Okay, Mason, this is Irene. Got it? Oh, I'm sorry, this is, I'm sorry, this is the 2008 storm that affected Hancock and Granville. This is Irene that affected my property. Uh, this is the out the, this is the beginning of the storm and the ocean that washed over my property and then this is the lagoon that my garden became. And this is the outflow from the culvert on, from Greg, um, Greg and Jean White's my property. And this is what my property looks like now. Nothing? Right. Well, thank you uh, for taking all these Photos. All right. So maybe this will have some historical value for people who haven't lived here. It actually, seems like a lot of people watch uh, Orca Mason. So I have to. People have come up to me and said, "Oh, what a horrible thing happened to you." And I say, "Oh, okay." This is the this is the storm in 2008, um, and I, I'm familiar with it from because I was living in. Uh, Granville at the time. <coughs> this is what happened to that that bridge near Vermont Home Bakery, where maybe something similar happened with um, um, uh, Lower Bethel Mountain Road, where the water just ate away at the at the surface of the road and the whole thing collapsed in time. And this is me walking on Route 100 South in the direction of Granville 
and about uh, water up to my up to my knees. All right. Uh, so I mean, I think by anyone's estimation, this was, you know, an act of God. I mean, it had a lot of, you know, uh, local impact, uh, and larger than that, an AP photographer took this, and I thought. I thought when I arrived at the group that I was going to be arrested for going beyond the emergency, whatever, lines. And this is, uh, oh, let me see. Oh. I want to thank Jerry LeBlanc for this. This is a very wonderful photo that appeared in the Herald of um, the collapse of that bridge that connects Route 73 to 100. Uh, but I mean, that's. I mean, it's a it's a very beautiful photo of a very you know disastrous event, and obviously that's the wrath of our in this book. I mean, Harold had so many articles that they made it into a book. So I we think I would. We won an award from the Vermont Press Association for it. It should have actually, and there, there are about five pages on Rochester that include some you know from here. But I think you know I would call that an active thought might as well. Uh, as to, as to whether April 15 was an act of God, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. But, uh, I don't think so. And people who might suggested, oh, this was an act of God, have scoffed at me. But whatever, okay. But I guess it's a matter of judgment. Okay. All right. So this is, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to point these up because I'm going to refer to these in my letter. This is the, um, what happened to Greg White's. Uh, so, so this is what happened to Greg White's, you know, at the bottom of Greg White's driveway, and there's a culvert, you know, right at the bottom of that. Uh, this is the, um, this is what happened to my property just at the beginning of uh, all this water moving, and so I mean, it looks like, I don't know, it looks like the ocean. It doesn't look like anything on land. And this is the lagoon that uh, replaced my, my garden. Uh, and it's just, uh, well, I mean, obviously there's going to be clay and silt inches deep. And this is the bottom of the culvert. Um, and this, there's a culvert from the, uh, uh, from, from the bottom of Greg White's driveway. And then it outflows onto my property. And that's a, that's a picture of the, of the down end of the culvert. And that's another picture of the down end. And really, there wasn't much water flowing through. So I think it really didn't perform at all well. I mean, so I have a question about uh, a different orientation of that culvert. And this is the mound of dirt that's still in front of my house. Right? Uh, and I've offered it to the town for you know, the road. You know, we try not to put dirt on the road, though. We try to put gravel on the road. But, yeah. Okay. But in silt, I know that you 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 just a lot of that silt and some of your topsoil too, right? Yeah. No, actually, yeah, very little. Did you get some of that back very out little. of there? Okay. I challenge you about that. Yeah. Okay. Anyhow, but yeah, but no, want to be yep. want to be gratuitous here. Yep. Yep. Gratuitous? No, that's probably not the right word. No. Informative. No, no, no. I want no. To be, right. Okay. Anyway. So I'm not going to drag you through the whole two pages of this. Right. But uh, I'm going to refer to culvert A, and that's the one at um, at, at the uh, at the foot of Greg um, Greg White's uh, Greg and Jean White's driveway. Yeah, so this culvert, and I'm reading from my letter now. Yep. This is paragraph, right? Yeah, so this culvert, I'm requesting that uh, that the culvert be oriented so that it outflows directly into the drainage ditch parallel to Maple Hill Road. At the June 10 Select Board meeting, I will show a photo of the, of the outflow from this culvert on August 29, 2000. I'm sorry, that should be 19. Where, when Rochester was struggling with the impact. I'm sorry, no, it is. Pardon me. At the June 10 Select Board meeting, I will show the photo of the outflow of this culvert on August 29, 2011, when Rochester was struggling with the impact of Tropical Storm Marina. This culvert drained directly onto my property. And the path of water outflowing from this culvert carried directly to the ewes and juniper bushes, providing cover for my 250-gallon liquid propane tank. The Irene photo shows the path of roads of beers and sand left after water subsided. And that's the picture here. Sorry, the lighting wasn't very good. 
you can see that the silt is carrying right to here, which is where my LP tank is. Two hundred fifty gallons there. All right. Now the LP, the LP, the Irene photo shows the path of road debris and sand left after water subsided. This LP tank is a source of fuel for heating our house, for heating our water, and for cooking. Thus, in my view, the current orientation of this culvert poses a danger to my wife's and my own health and safety, and a danger to our house. As to the performance of this culvert during the April 15 storm, the destruction of the bottom of, White's, of the White's driveway, where you find the opening of this, cul of this culvert, was total and dramatic, as I demonstrated with the photo I shared with you. But as I can also demonstrate with photos, the outflow of water and debris from this culvert onto my property was nearly non-existent. With its current orientation, this culvert simply doesn't perform its function well. In my view, then, the reorientation of this culvert to outflow into the drainage dish is necessary. However, and this is profiting from conversations with um, Cooter and with and materials Pat Harvey sent me. However, I understand from reading materials that Pat Harvey sent me and from conversation with road crew foreman Campion, Campion that the, the town has the right to maintain existing drainages. In the event that the town chooses to take the action of re chooses not to take the action of reorienting this culvert, which I've requested, I would appreciate the town's assistance to re restore a swale which had previously existed under a large apple tree bordering Maple Hill. The design of which was clearly intended to carry water away from the location of the above mentioned LP tanks. And in the conversation with Kudra I had, he, he was aware of that swale as well. Culvert B, this is the culvert um, that um, is just above uh, the one I'm refer I, I was just referring to. And this is the culvert that this water flowed from during Irene. And, and you can draw a couple of conclusions from this photo. Uh, three, actually, I think. One, there was an awful lot of water. Two, the culvert actually performed very well. It did its job of carrying water from the culvert to, to the channel, and obviously the channel was overwhelmed. Um, and, um, and, and, and maybe it's only two points. But, I mean, first it did, it did, there was a lot of water, it, it did its job, I mean, well. But basically, it just overwhelmed the channel and just came right down. And I have to thank, uh, I think the Harveys, I think they, they designed the, uh, um, the landscape because the, the water came down through the pines and down the slopes. And that's just above the, um, just, just above the clothesline, it just right angled right to the edge of the property. So that was a design thing. Right. <coughs> Anyhow. Mr. Chairman, if I might interrupt, maybe the select board would be uh, prudent to call a special meeting to hear of a landowner's concerns about his property. We've heard this now for three different meetings. You haven't heard this at all. Uh, I beg I your pardon. I understand it's going to continue. You haven't heard this part at all. This is a separate item, distinct and different from other items I've asked. It doesn't go back to April 15th? No, it does not. You are incorrect. You can look at the agenda. No, I'm so Frank, if you could keep it civil, please. No, I'm I'm, I'm telling yes. you, it's incorrect for whatever reasons. Well, this is a separate item I'm raising, which follows from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can raise it, but can you just calm down yeah, a little bit? Yeah, no, no, I'm just I'm, I'm going to have my say here. I'm not going to have this deferred to some meeting. And well, I you can. But I'm 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 not going to let that happen. This covered D. <laughs> All right, viewing yep. the orange cone marking the outflow end of this culvert, I thought that this culvert at the very northern corner of my property beyond the stand of pine trees was going to be replaced with a larger culvert. This culvert outflows into an existing channel and the water moving through Russell Gannon and then Lloyd property flows into Wing Brook. Road, road crew foreman champion informed me about that I was in error, that this culvert was not one of the two culverts to be replaced on our section of Maple Hill. There is already road stone on the bank of the channel mentioned above, 
the bank which water and debris would impact as they flowed from the culvert with force from a storm event. This stone appears to have been placed there. I mean, it's, it seems to me it's too neat to have been placed by a storm. Whether by Charles Smith's crew or by the road crew, I don't know. In any case, this added stone has strengthened the resilience of this channel to damage from storm water and debris. I would, I would appreciate assistance from the town. And again, I would appreciate assistance from the town in further strengthening this barrier through the deposit of additional stone along the bank. Third item, in sloped regrading of Maple Hill Road. This is something I mentioned in my thesis. Finally, consideration needs to be given to regrading the storm damage, uh, the storm, the storm damage affected section of Maple Hill Road, so that pitches to the ditch side of the road. So the, can I interrupt for a second? When you yeah. keep referring to the ditch side of the road, which which are you referring to? The it's only rear side, side or the, east, the other side? The east There's side. There's only one ditch side, as I'm sure you've noticed from having been there. Well, no, I'm just trying to make this clear. That's on the uh, side from the other side of the road from your property, correct? That's right. All right. Greg White. He's referring to the east side of the road. East side of the road. Okay. No, I just wanted to make that clear because not everyone has uh, been I'm there. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Actually, I have to thank you for having visited the <coughs> disaster scene. And all right, I, I apologize. There is only one ditch side of Maple Hill where I am, and that's on the other side. With the current crown surface grading of Maple Hill Road, water such as that would powerfully outflow the ditch beyond White's driveway will, in my view, assuredly produce the washout, which has so severely damaged the northeast corner of my property lawn and wide vegetable garden. Once water has passed beyond the crown, there is nothing to stop it. No ditch, no berm on my side of the road. <coughs> At the May 13th select board meeting, I showed a photo documenting the surge over the, over the water onto my property, carrying with it road, stone, dirt, white material, greater in the road, etc., and creating a lagoon where, where our vegetable garden had been for eight years now. A lagoon which subsided into inch by inch piled, uh, which subsided into each inch by inch piled into clay and silt. An in-sloped grading of Maple Hill Road would cause stormwater to flow in the direction of the quite deep stone line ditches, which DEC MRGP is directing town to construct and maintain. As to the Vermont District Manager's caveat that such in-sloped grading would involve Bringing a lot of rope, bringing a lot of rope material, <coughs> I propose to donate to the town the considerable qual quantity of such material still piled up on the northeast corner of my property. I trust that as you continue to conform to the expectations of the MITP standards, you will have my file of testimony, including this letter, at hand when time comes to consider this section of Maple Hill Road. I have to hope that going forward, we are all working toward the same goal. And be assured that going forward, I intend that my voice will be heard. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Frank. So that is the um, two Maple Hill Road culverts aspect that you added to the agenda. Now about the Rochester Infrastructure Resiliency Roads and Culverts questions. Yeah. Is that something separate, or did yes, we kind of cover that? This will be short. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I, I needed to read that letter, but I think the rest of it will be short. I, 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 I was trying to sort this out in detail, but I think there are basically two questions. And I have one for the road commission and one for the road performance. Just what are the duties and responsibilities of Rochester's Road Commissioner? And what are the duties and responsibilities of Rochester's Road, road Crew Foreman? I have to hope that DEC has provided a list of the duties and responsibilities for each of these positions. In any case, um, um, I've, I've given you an email for a response. It seems to me that's the basic okay. question. What, okay. And what are the All duties right. and responsibilities and are we? And then the next question is, uh, how well are we going to fulfill them? Right? That's all I have to do All right. Then we've got... Um
Info, local, state, and federal resources, contacts, agencies for making whole Rochester private property owners who suffered from April 15 storm damage. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I was, I was surprised that that hadn't been an agenda item that one of the select board members would have put on the agenda. I mean, I, I mean I've, um, you know, when I, I heard from you when uh, you went with the Rochester Rebuild Foundation, and I, I heard from, for example, Pam Sterling that um, Two Rivers Autoquichi Regional Commission was a resource for water-related uh, issues. But frankly, I was hoping you would be able to fill that in for me. And obviously, in terms of uh, state resources, Department of Environmental Conservation is a rich source. It has a couple of pages of numbers and uh, resources. I think people would, would be thinking they should go to the Department of Environmental Protection, but that's the Attorney General. And if, if you want assistance, numbers, hotline numbers, then Department of Environmental Conservation is a source. And I, and I, I thought this would be not more in uh, Joan Allen's bailiwick, but I was looking for also resources after we've accepted the FEMA money. My understanding is that um, DEC would be able to assist us with um, money for um, you know, private, private property owners. But I it, don't it would think kick so. in after FEMA has been approved. Assuming Donald Trump doesn't tell us all to drop dead, I guess. But uh, that's what I would recommend to go to the Department of Environment, Environmental Conservation site. And then there's just a lot of material there and a lot of phone numbers that people can follow up on. So, do, right. do you have right. ideas yourself? You, know, you covered most of those there. Those are where you'd go, you know. The, um, I, as I recommended to you, perhaps the Rebuild Rochester yeah, yeah. Committee. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. yeah, and that's, um, you know, but usually that's for more um, little dire circumstances. Of course, that was formed during Irene, and it did a lot of, of, of cleaning up of, of people's um, houses, more and more houses that were trashed. And, um, and currently, those funds are used more for people, like mostly elderly or people that can't afford heating yeah. fuel and such like that. But that's that's an application that's that's yeah. available, you know. But I was hoping the work, um, you know, transmission of this meeting would maybe get people thinking about, well, okay, so my driveway walked out and became part of somebody else's front yard. Mm -hmm. what, what do I do? Well, I think Fix DC it. is a good yeah. DC yeah. is a good source. You know? No. Nope. I think well, I think Two Rivers was actually a good source of this question. So right, that's all I have there. So your last one on here so far is that um, you got a notification, as many people did, that Green Mountain Power is going to do some vegetation management yeah. in the right of way. I mean, did, uh, yeah. um, Tom, yeah. you probably did receive that. Any, anyone who has um, uh, trees and vegetation on the Green Mountain Power right of way should have gotten that notice. But I was surprised that the select board didn't. I mean, that just struck me as I didn't. Odd. Did we get a notice? I don't think so. I didn't. No, I think it's more the property owners. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you want right. a copy of it, but you already have it. Um, yeah. Martha, do you have a copy of that? Uh, the thing from Green Mountain Power? Yeah. No, I don't. I, didn't, I never got one as a property owner. Power lines. Excuse me? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. they just divide away property going up. I mean, this was just well, a, not, this was just a crazy and a heads up with a select board because I'm, I assure you, you're going to get calls about this because because um, you well, know, and then, then we would probably refer them to Green, Green Mountain, Mountain Power. Power. I think yeah. that it's they notify you, and if you have matter. certain yeah. certain concerns and issues, you get then, I mean, then a, you get in touch with them. Contact, right. There is a contact. Right. Dave, 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 yeah. Dave, but Dave. but my experience with uh, with this with this bridge, um, uh, at, at, with this bridge over Wing Brook. And at that meeting with, um, um, what is it, the Forest Service, you know, I had no complaints at all about Greg Ross, about the town, or about Harvey. Mm -hmm. I did have complaints about, I mean, um, it was New England Tree Experts, I think, was the firm that uh, the power company had hired. And they were just incredibly aggressive about cutting, cutting trees. 
I mean, just it just it just I mean I think they ravaged the, the trees uh, on my on my property and um, I mean I, I mean Greg Rice said it would be okay if they you know cut the trees and you know the the power company power people but I don't know I, but I think if I had realized what they would do I would have said no why don't you get some piece of paper. Um, slow it down. Mike had a comment. To, you know, yeah, I was, I was kind of wondering what this has to do with the town of Rochester and the slate board. Uh, power cutting. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have property. much control yeah. over that. Yeah. 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 No. It has to do with that has to do with a large amount of property. God. It, it's your property. You, they've got a right of it. It's, it's, yeah. it's um. The slate board can't help you on that. I am trying to. I don't know. Why do I bother? I, I try to. I, I'm trying to alert. I, I, I was trying to alert the select board that this was going to be going on on roadways that are, it, are, are Rochester. It always goes on. And also to, you know, maybe get out ahead of Green Mountain Power and um, just very aggressive, you know, cutting of cutting of. Cutting of trees and vegetation. Um, I mean, what does that have to do with Rochester? I don't know. It has to do with Rochester that's on the right of way of the of the of Greenland power. But I mean, next time I won't bother calling anyone's attention to it at all. I'll just make my own phone call, I guess. Right. Well, that's really what you have to do for that. On your, yeah, we, it wouldn't be right. in the town's, um, you know, process to call it. Yeah and say, um, what are you doing on this private land? It's, it's, it's your job to, that's why they sent you the letter, yeah, you know, as other people. Yeah. But I just wanted, especially yeah. in the But no, as we have a public forum here, and it's, it's information that people yeah. that yeah. got the letter, if they, um, that they also go with um, sometimes about um, spraying of, of herbivores, yeah, and if people don't want that, you can, yeah. you, they give you a chance yeah. to register as yeah. please don't, you know, do that on yeah. my land. So yeah, and some. if you wanted to share it with other Rochester residents, the Front Porch Forum is yeah. a yeah. great yeah. avenue for yeah. that. Yeah. 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 And no, you I, was, I was trying to be courteous and responsible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, yeah I, you're talking specifically about your land. No, I'm talking okay. about my land Just and also about the Rochester roads, mm -hmm. Maple Hill, and okay. whatever ones have power lines on. We heard you. Yeah, we, okay. We were good. Okay. So, um, we had one more thing on the agenda that you added about the Board of Listers and oh, Civil I'm Authority. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. what's yeah, that I'm about? I've, I've gotten so involved with people telling me what does that have to do with anything? Why don't I bring this to some other forum and whatever? But no, I, re I received um, a notice of um, a notice from um, the Board of Listers. I have I um, I, I grieved. Um, my property evaluation and, um, and 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 everything was in due course, and I received the uh, I received the notice back to them that my appeal was denied. Right? And so it says, pursuant to Title 32, Vermont statutes annotated section blah blah blah, a person agreed by the final decision of the Board of Listers after grievance, they may appeal to the Board of Civil Authority of the town. I get I um, fine. No, I know what the next step is. But my question is, um, I mean, I, I indicated in my, I indicated in my um, grievance the, the grounds on which I uh, was, um, I don't know, I, I indicated in my appeal the grounds on which I was grieving um, the evaluation. But if, if the board of list is not required to give me reasons for their denial of my appeal, I'm, like, I'm saying this is. I get I, would, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't know the answer to that, really. But, no. But it seems to no, be I some kind of violation of due process. Well, I think you can. Uh, your next step is to call for the Board of Civil Authority no, to I review that, the but, grievance. But they're, they're, but they're saying, and this, and this, I'm not the only one who appealed um, the evaluation. So Correct. I think this pertains well to me. There, are, there are there are several every yeah. year that go through the grievance process. But it says the appeal must be made in writing and delivered to the town clerk, and it must briefly set forth the grounds upon which the appeal was based. Mm -hmm. so but it would, appeal, it would be helpful to find out the grounds on which the appeal was denied. 
I think that would come out in the Board of Civil Authority hearing. Well, in, and then there'd well, be yet another site. Beforehand, I'd like to understand that. Well, then you so could I ask the listers for that. My, so I need to contact the Board of Listers and say what? Please, so like I'm requesting. Be prior to going to the Board of yeah. Civil Authority, perhaps you could have more of an explanation of why they did not change right. the value. Yeah. And it says that this seems so kind of help dry. you make that decision. It seemed like it was leaving out a step to me. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah, they can be reached. Mason, you have a comment. Oh, could, you, could you could you join the crowd once everyone else is on camera? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious about the civil authority issue. Um, it would be wonderful if you could explain who is on our civil authority oh, yeah. board and how that process works. Is it something that I haven't seen? in our annual town meetings. Uh, we had a, a bit of an issue, it seemed, during the last election around civil authority of the town. It still has some questions going on. So can you please explain civil authority to the camera, <laughs> to the folks at home? You go, you well, were, you were the board of civil authority is made up of the listers the select board members and the justice of the pieces. Pieces? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Those are the pieces yeah. of the civil authority. And the town clerk. And the town clerk. And the town clerk. Um, uh, once the listers have uh, done a site visit for a grievance and come to their next conclusion, um, they do comparisons to other properties and they come to a conclusion on whether or not the property value should be changed. Um, if the property owner still doesn't agree with that and wants to grieve to the next level, they can go to the Board of Civil Authority. The Board of Civil Authority gets together. You, the person presents their point of view. The listers present their point of view. The Board of Civil Authority then does another site visit to the house, the property, and comes and does their own conclusion. Um, after that, um, the process goes to the state board. Um, if that is not settled. If so, that's yeah, not settled, you still, then you still have one more recourse to go to go to the state board. State board of what? Property valuation? Mm -hmm. The state that's board of unjust disposition? No, I don't think we have that one yet, but <laughs> no. if, we, if we need more engineers, we'll find that one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or Patty, it goes to mediation. Right, and at that point, after the Board of Civil Either Authority, the other. You, would, you, would, you would start paying for your representation. Mm -hmm. uh, in reference to election issues, the realtors are involved with that with the Civil Authority? Realtors? The realtors? I am a licensed realtor. I'm also a licensed real estate broker. A realtor is different from okay, a broker. Okay. So what you're saying, who's on Civil Authority? Listers. 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 Listers are involved with our political process when it comes to election and civil authorities. Uh, uh, no. 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 Love it. Okay. No. No. Two different you're, boards. You're getting into. Well, I'm trying to understand yeah. civil authority. And who is? She oh, just um, re re board rewind board? the tape and she'll, uh, and you can <laughs> okay. see. Yeah. yeah, it could be another meeting. Yeah. I'm, I'm just yeah. The Board of Civil Authority are, civil authority, so. are the yeah. three listers, the five justice of the peace Is? persons, <laughs> and the three select board members, and the, and the town clerk. Okay. For political decision making. Twelve people. By statute. Yes. So it's the three listers, the five justices of the peace, the, the three members of the select board, and the town clerk. The town clerk. Thank you. Thank you. Emphasize. I mean, my wife and I left the listers meeting thinking we had a good meeting with them. So, I mean, I can accept decisions. I would just like. I'm to sure that I'm sure that they have documentation that yeah. backs up their decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I wasn't complaining no. about the listers. Yeah. All right. So. Um, mm -hmm. Did to um, Mike, you, did we cover everything you wanted to talk to about well, Brook Street or pretty no? Much. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Uh, I was just wondering. I've got a letter from Chris Muff myself. Yeah. I sent a letter to uh, yeah. V Train. 
and just asked me, what can we do about this mm -hmm. thing? And they said that there was a plan sent to the town. Um, In April. It says the Vermont Agency of Transportation has been providing assistance to develop a project to repair the closed segment of this highway. V -trans, we have provided a traffic detour plan to the town which designates Vermont 12, Vermont 107, and Vermont 100 as the detour. This plan includes portable, changeable message signs, which are the electronic signs that you refer to. The cost of running these signs is reimbursable under the FHWAER program. And we have discussed this with the town. Please let us know if you have any other questions. Does the town have this plan? We do. Yes. Okay. I mean, it was not clear in the beginning that that cost was going to be reimbursable. Okay. Well, I was under wondering the cost why of that. this right. hadn't been right. put in Because we were looking so at like $30,000 plus dollars for Right, because it was signage, stated that is, it was $35,000 right. a sign. Right. And so, so Chris there. Chris said that this was reimbursable, so I was wondering if the town had this plan, yeah. how come it hadn't been yeah. implemented yet? It's just been one of one of, one one of things, many but things, but yeah. But, but is it, it is. But we are. People? But yeah, it yeah, is, and we're moving forward on it. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's it's yeah. happening. So we we actually, a good job answering my yeah. Yeah. Our our top priority is to get Bethel Mountain Road back serviceable again, where we could drive on it. That's right. that's number one. Yeah. I, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. But I think you know yeah. how do you put a price on somebody's life if they get killed coming down Brook Street? Yeah. Isn't that a priority? That's it why is. we're fixing it Bethel is. Mountain Road because we didn't want to put a price on someone's life by driving down that road the way it, they did on right. April no, I understand yeah. that. There yeah. was a lady there that that could have died. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah. If these signs had been put up, it would eliminate a lot of this traffic because people would know, stay out from Bethel Mountain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. If you knew about this, why couldn't it have been mm -hmm. implemented sooner? Yeah, well, we're, we're getting right? there. We're trying. It's better. We're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. Like everything else, it's, yeah. it's way more complicated. Than yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, everything is. <laughs> yeah. So this is going to be implemented. Yeah. Yeah. Martha, you have a question? Um, do I remember correctly that one of the things that was mentioned about signage was some sort of electronic? That's what that's what, that's what we're, we're talking, talking about. about. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. I just wanted because I was here over near the park over the weekend, and there were some people, two different out of state cars, who stopped me and asked about stuff, and were very very confused. And I was trying to explain it to them. Yeah. So these will be like on 112. Yeah, yeah what probably 112. Francis has recommended is that we rent four. Two would be on the Bethel side, right. and two would be on the Rochester side. So and then the state right away. So yeah. Right away. yeah. I and think that'd be a big right. help. Yeah. 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 They ain't gonna stop the speeding because no. there's locals that don't do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you know it would cut down on the traffic, which oh, would yeah. cut back yeah. on the speed. What's happening with the speed bumps that we talked about a month ago? They're somewhere they're on a truck. <laughs> they're yeah. Under. Good. Yeah. They're bumping around in a truck somewhere on the road. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that will deter the tractor trailer that came down this morning. Yeah. With its jake brake on all the way from Debbie Turnbull down through. I didn't know if that would. Geez. Yeah. It was. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. And um, so I don't know if you got a letter from Chris Matrick, but I spoke to him over the weekend. He watched a huge camper trailer go around the barriers and head up Bethel Mountain Road <laughs> with eight motorcycles behind him. Um, he said the motorcycles were able to turn around. Yeah. The trailer was not. It had to back all the way down to the Huntington House. In the meantime, he was able to get a hold of Mark, mm -hmm. the trooper, who came down and spoke to all those people. Mm -hmm. Now, twice while I was downtown and went home the other day, uh, Saturday night we came up. And there's this car stopped right in the middle of the intersection. We couldn't go around him because he was right dead in the middle of the road. He was looking at his GPS, he was right? Yeah. Yeah. GPS. Yeah. So the GPS said go this way. Yeah. So I, we he rolled said, down the wrong. window and said, "Can we help you?" And I indexed it. And, and where are you going? He said, "Bangor, Maine." <laughs> so back down here. We're down to 100. Go yeah. 107. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. thing happened yesterday. I'm coming up from downtown, yeah. and the car is right in front of me. He pulled into Noel Smith's driveway. I pulled up beside of him, and I said, um, 
can I help you? He said, well, my GPS says I need to go. I said, no, you don't. Yeah. Where are you headed? He said, Massachusetts. I said, you need to go back to 100 and 107. Yeah. 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 That no. GPS has not done anything. No, no, no they have not. No, they've done, I don't. But they thank probably you for won't. what you've done. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. They do on me. When we took our trip out west, we knew before we got there if there was a road closed to yeah. bridge out, or if we had to switch lanes or whatever. So they must just do it on the major. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I'd like to make another sign. <laughs> Be gentle. <laughs> now I know. Hi, can I have a discussion about one of the signs? <laughs> um, <laughs> I would like to make a sign that says, your GPS is wrong. And put it down here by the Huntington House. <laughs> because that's what they keep saying. Oh, so, uh, GPS is going this way. They're not reading the signs on the park. No, no, they Something's don't. Something's got to be down here. Yeah. So, Diane, should we issue you a, a uniform? <laughs> hey, I could be the traffic cop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, between, between 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon and 8 o'clock Sunday night, it's not Brook Street, it's the interstate. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. It is. It's unbelievable. Trucks, motors. Yep. Nancy? It also Nancy. might be helpful if Huntington House would move their sign that says when they're open to the right. It's in the town right of way. Um, but it might be helpful if they were to move their sign over so that people really could see the signs. I've seen people see the sign up and said closed and they turn around right there. Yeah. But that sign does block it. It, it blocks it. Yeah. But there's a sign down by 100, the intersection. Oh yeah, there's it. a lot of yeah. signs, yeah. And this morning I saw, well, Liz saw the constable go up about quarter to nine. I saw him come down about nine o'clock um, at three, 45 was it we saw him again coming back down coming back down now, i don't know if he just riding the road but that's not doing him a damn bit of good he's got to sit somewhere and i don't even know if he's working for us i don't know who it was but it was the constable car <laughs> Yeah, because he, he lives in Forestdale, so it's probably him Oscar. going to work. Yeah, taking the shortcut. <laughs> yeah, why didn't he go to 107? <laughs> Dave, Harvey, you had a, your hand up. I just worry about the speed bumps. I'm just wondering if I can get around it with a motorcycle. Or are they going to be continuously all their trucks? I know how wide they're going to be. Um, I have so you Cooter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I went to so talk to is John. Talk to Cooter. He's the one that ordered them this, the length and size. I can't recall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a signage. No, yeah, they yeah. come with signs. Yeah. 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 I don't like one on purpose either. My motorcycle. That's so nimble. Right. It's a regular long day. Mm -hmm. So did she get permission? <laughs> If she can put a sign as long as it's not in the town right away. She can put as many signs as she wants, and and they don't have any bad words on them. Yeah. She just didn't know how to spell car. Slow the car down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't you said okay. nothing worse than that. Yes, I did. I, I did but that was one of several words that we. I, <laughs> yes. I understand. Yes. I understand. <laughs> but it is a family neighborhood. Remember. I understand it. Well, so they did. I mean, for that hour that slide was up, man, they were going slow down. <laughs> so, speaking of reading, got any updates for us from the library? Uh, we have a regular meeting tomorrow afternoon, and there are agendas posted around. Okay. What time tomorrow afternoon? We actually we have a longer meeting. We're starting at four thirty, but our regular meeting starts at six o'clock. Oh, an afternoon social. And they're having some wonderful programs at the library on Thursday nights if you haven't been. Mm -hmm. Is it? I'm sorry. Is there a working group meeting tomorrow that related to the planning commission? Um, I. It's not. Um, it's not, not a, the planning a public. officially a planning meeting. No, no. no there is. Yeah, there's a public. This. Uh, oh, is it? It's a public yeah. meeting. Yeah, yeah, it's a public meeting about. Um, That's the Rochester. You know the Rochester town plan. No, no, oh, no, it's no, it's not, no. it's, um, in, it's, it's the envisioning the future of yeah. Rochester, trying to energize. Rochester vision yeah. meeting. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I guess I didn't see a notice of it. I mean, I wrote it down at the time, but. I've seen some notices I, around, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Um, so tomorrow at 6, I guess. Yes. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, and John is not here, so we don't have, I guess we've talked a lot about the roads already. <coughs> um, Terry, you've got any updates for us? They're going to do that agent on Thursday. Is that the, uh, which one? Is that by the, the one by the um, P-Vine or by the school? Both. Both. Take one out. You take the P-Vine, I'm taking the top off. I have to put the on one at school. Okay. Because I saw the invoice for, it looks like a new hydrant. That's got to be a brand new hydrant. Yeah, okay. Ground. Okay. That's the only way you can fix them. Okay. You know, you can't buy the bottom high. Okay. Excuse me, Terry, who's doing the work? Is it the crew? Yeah, it's Terry. Part of the town crew and Harvey's doing the digging. <laughs> All right, we, um, thank you. Utilities. <coughs> that brings us down to, um, you had an announcement that you wanted to make, Mason. Sure. I was going to wait till after old business. Right. Well, old business, I mean. Oh, missing book. The announcement is one of our roads has a fantastic loop and bloom right now. So on 73100, when you're coming to town, before you take the left on the bridge, take a notice of the volume of lupins all over that situation. That's the next three weeks, so it'll, it'll help put a smile on you. All right, Is this better you. than shovel. Yeah. <laughs> nope, 73100. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mason, mine haven't popped yet. Oh, uh, that's our little one. Oh, you got it. <laughs> right, right. All right, and then down to the uh, old business of the missing book. There's been no, haven't found anything on that. Don't know if you had any more questions Anybody on looking? that. I haven't physically oh, way, been looking. Bruce, Bruce Malone, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Bruce has done the, the lion's share of the work yeah. on that. Yeah. So... It's still missing and not available. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I gave you a, a request last week. I got some stuff uh, back in your wire. Yeah. Uh, I came in and looked through some stuff that what Julie found. Mm -hmm. and spent a couple of hours looking through. But I'm still looking for the documents that you quoted in the two public meetings that are in the, in the, in the uh, minutes. Now, that was only two or three years ago. Did you actually read something? No, it, actually that information came from Mason's first lawyer, Tony Delorier, and she had shared that information, so I was just quoting her. She had shared that information that they'd found, you know, what they, the discussion of it, but never found any action taken, and that's, that's, um, that's where I came with that. So I didn't read it myself. I was just going by what the lawyer had brought to the, the conversation, you know. So I, I don't know where she found that. So maybe I shouldn't have listened to the lawyer, but I did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you didn't personally read it anyway. No. So no, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As far as I recollect. Well, it's hearsay. There's no well. document to back it up. We'll get into that. All right. What do we, should we talk to her about that sometime? Yeah, it would be interesting. Might be. See, well, I'm curious where, she, interesting where she read that if yeah, that book is so to, missing. Yeah, to speak yeah. with her about that. Yeah. Who's that? I'm curious where she read that. If that, if she read that in the book that's missing now, that's kind of interesting. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's what I thought yeah. was interesting about this whole thing. Yeah, is that information is being gotten from somewhere, mm -hmm. but yet we've got no minutes from 1920 to 1930. Right. Oh, is it is it's 1920 now? 20. Wasn't it 1930? Yeah, these minutes. 38 gone. Or are they it's getting a bigger something range. to be hoped for? You know, it's expanding. <laughs> There's always hope, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Not for these minutes. Not for these minutes. It doesn't see, but I, I 
don't want to sit here and say give up and don't look for them. They're totally gone. I don't know that. You, do, you just said you don't want to hear hearsay. So, Mike? What's the definition of public records? Public records? The definition of public records? Does that mean that be? anybody can go into the public records? Yes. Department? Yes, they are public. So why are you people doing all this research? If I'm just trying to find a book, Mike. Right. You know, well, if somebody points me at the book, I'll come in and look at it. That's what I did. Okay. Martha, you had a question, too? No, I was just going to say, when this originally came up several months ago, I looked at the bound volumes that we have at the Herald office because I didn't know how long ago someone actually came to select their names and covered them for the paper, and I thought that might be helpful. But I could not find from maybe even the early 70s on back where anybody did cover them for the newspaper. Hmm. So I know that's no help, but I just uh, was thinking that that was another avenue for something like that. Right. Um, newspapers did things differently at different times, I guess. Um, anyway. But if you want anything from the 80s on... <laughs> <laughs> Frank. Sure. Um, what, what provides the official record of what happens at a select board meeting? The um, she's taken notes, minutes. And, uh, minutes, and we type them up and and review them, and that's one of the first things that we did was to uh, uh, prove that record of the the last no, last no, meeting. I, I yeah, what, that's that's I, the I mechanism. What approval of minutes means, but but it, I, I guess it, it is a question about what about what is the official record of the meeting, because it seems to me that and I have to, I have to thank Julie and I have to thank <coughs> Martha. And also Mason for, you know, providing, you know, uh, records of, of these meetings. But it seems to me sometimes um, it, maybe it's a matter of what somebody deems is important. It's the same thing that but 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 I know um, in, in Martha's account of, of a meeting where um, you know Dane Larry was speaking, she quoted Dane Larry's, um, you know, you have to. The, the road crew is doing the best they can. You have to roll with it, blah, blah. And, and, I, and I guess Julie chose you know, not to quote that directly. And I'm sure, I mean, Dune has, the, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sure Mason has, you know, the whole you know, meeting on, on a video record with Orca Media. So it's just a question of the official record is what the town clerk submits for your approval. Yes. Yeah. Nancy, you had a I comment on that? I think what you read in the paper is exactly what could no. be construed to be the official record. No, she's no, talking. She's a reporter. Martha does her no, no. own minutes. Yeah. No, no. I, I certainly can't say. I, 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 I am the minute taker for two organizations now, and I understand it's like totally <laughs> difficult. And I, and I had, I, I, I had the secretary at the at the par at the parish office say, you know, Frank, these minutes you took were three pages long. Could you cut it down to two so we could do back to back on the. And I said, no, I can't, because that doesn't represent the point of view that Right. OK. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mason. Um, uh, just a reference to Patty. You were wondering about the dates of the missing book. Bruce can share that information with you, because you put it in a letter form. I put it in the inventory of the vault that I gave to the town. And missing. 1920 and 1950. There is no book that has that title between 1920 and 1950. Okay. There is no book that has that title. Yeah. Title. Right. And there's no minutes. Which would have been in the book. So, 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 so it may be a book that's mistitled. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, so, uh, that's the one we want. I was talking with Tony just Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And I asked her about this particular situation, and she told me that she saw in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the thing where they had discussed it. And then she went to look in the following meeting, and there was no, there was no minutes. There was no book. It was like she went from one meeting to nothing in the minutes. What year did you have to I have I have a notation from a meeting before I was on the select board, August 28th, 2017, where Tony Delorier was at, in attendance with Mason at that meeting. So if, if, 
if that's a date you're looking for for when Tony was here. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was August 28, 2017. Because I, I was going to select board meetings back then too, so yeah. I was making some notes. Are you sure it wasn't Hancock? Wasn't she doing research in Hancock as well? Could be. Well, I'll talk to so, so one question I have is that what point? Again, could you come around and Only be part of the, the scene here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. So, so James can see me. James. Yeah. Um, the Secretary of State opinion, the Secretary of State Jim Condo's opinion, is that it should only take 15 days for a town to respond. It does it have its minutes or it doesn't. So tonight, this select board can say, we have no idea where those minutes are. They're lost, maybe stolen. We don't know, but the public deserves an answer. So when will that answer come? Is it another year from now that you're looking for this? But did, did Jim Condos feels 15 days is a reasonable that? time for any town to, to make an announcement, have you lost him or not? So my question is, when are you going to make an announcement? Did we not just say that we don't have the book, we can't find yeah. the book? That's, uh, I mean... Right, put this in the minutes tonight that you officially yeah. are done looking for the book because it's lost. I'm not going to oh. say that we're done looking no, for the book. For I mean, oh, we're well, we're we're well, how our sure now it's such the Secretary of State feels it's is and we'll a reasonable we'll go on advice frame, of our council. And we have now yeah. gone for months. We're going to so, talk to the lawyers. So, just, just the, you, it would, it's 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 unreasonable to expect it's unreasonable that. To hey, wait, would you let me finish well. speaking? Well, I'm sorry. It's unreasonable. It's unreasonable to expect that. As time goes on, if those minutes are found, that we're going to just ignore them? Is it so, no, yeah. it's, it's on the radar. So yes, we can say right now that we don't know where they are. We presume they're lost, have been destroyed, what happened? But we don't know what happened. But if they come about, when we're flipping through some book that doesn't seem relevant, then we'll say, hey, here they are. This, just because we're saying we don't have them, okay, we I reserve the right to find them in the future. I heard okay? you, but I'm okay. saying you right. should talk to Jim Condos. He thinks 15 days is a reasonable time for a town to find its books. I think That's all I'm saying is like, are you going to drag training. this out another few Do you more want me to say it again? We, 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 yeah. we well, have not found it. them. It's okay. You haven't found them. I heard yeah, you. Okay. I'm just telling you. You're not hearing me. But the opinion of the Secretary of State is it's reasonable for 15 days when a request is made that you find your books. And right. then you should announce right. to the public. We, we, we just the did that. Yeah. 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 Right. Like what? You don't hear he what I'm saying? told you that. You're, you're not saying anything. I said, Jim Condo, the Secretary of State, feels 15 days is a reasonable amount of time for a it's town a to make loop. an announcement. They have the books or they don't. And put the statement. Well, I just heard them say they don't know where the book is. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yes. I don't you care what Jim Conn. I know you do. Okay. Well, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should come look for them. Jim Conn should come look for them. All right. Do you believe there's yeah. just one book. Pardon? Is it just one book? It's, it's hard to tell. It, uh, I, I would no, not think so. Hard to tell. There's a, the book scan a few. There, there, there are some that are really small. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's some I that understand. are. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it's all in handwriting. Yeah. Yes. Some of it are hard to read. Hard to read, yes. Very beautiful handwriting, but hard to read. In the 50s, it was tight. <coughs> and and but now we're going back to 1920. Nobody else has anything else they want to, to talk about. We're going to call that good for tonight. And thank you all for coming. No, wait, wait. Wait, Harlan had his hand oh, up first. I just want to say one positive thing. The road crew was on my way grinding up trees and shit. I couldn't believe it. They actually, they, well, actually, I couldn't believe it. They <laughs> took down trees that were going to fall. Before they fall. fell. Yeah. <laughs> you know, rather than waiting for a weekend or a holiday yep. for somebody to call in so it can go on in overtime, I just had to get out cooter for uh, Thank you know, you. taking care of this. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. 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 All kinds of racket up on Bethel Mountain, and I'm happy to hear it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's only just begun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Those Mike. were tree trimming. They were trimming their trees back out of the right of way in yeah, preparation for. There was a lot of grinding, but then there was chainsaws yeah. too. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Good. You have yep. something else you wanted to say? Yeah, I was just wondering what about the constable or uh, sheriff um, or we're, if there was any update. Um, there is. We're working towards a contract with him and hopefully starting the by the, yeah, with the yeah. sheriff by the, around the 1st of July. Hopefully is when oh. we're going to be starting. Yeah. yeah. It, the new budget year, too. Oh, yeah. New budget year. New <laughs> budget. That's Addison yeah. County, right? No. Nope. Windsor. Oh, we're going to go with Windsor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they finally met together and straightened out their, their thoughts. Is Mark going to be back, but in a different car? <laughs> um, <laughs> no comment. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you.